Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today, hopefully we're gonna be able to talk about my experience with batteries and how to size the battery specifically for a given radio. And the reason for this is it's the most frequent question I get asked. And it's really not that complicated. Uh, first of all, my experience is very limited, so keep uh, that in mind. I've only been operating on the air for about two years and my experience is only with one type of battery chemistry, and that is lithium iron phosphate batteries. This is a newer battery technology that has a lot of advantage, advantages over a traditional uh, lead acid battery. Uh, for example, the battery you would have in your vehicle, the, the starter battery. Now, one thing I love about the lithium iron phosphate batteries in comparison to lead acid is that it is half the weight given an equally sized lead acid battery. So as a man portable operator, I prefer uh, the lithium iron phosphate batteries for that reason alone. You also get, for the most part, the entire rated capacity of the battery. This is a 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which means I could deplete pretty much all 12 amp hours. If this was a lead acid battery, it would be about half that because lead acid batteries do not like to be discharged below 50% without permanently damaging the batteries. These batteries are also typically smart. They typically come with something called a BMS or battery management system, which is some circuitry that will individually balance all of the individual cells. Uh, it will also detect um, uh, current spikes and cut the batteries off if there's too much current. It'll also disconnect uh, the batteries if it's low voltage to prevent uh, discharging below uh, a really critical level. And these are also very safe compared to the lead acid batteries. Now, my experience has been with just one company, Bioino. I'm not uh, affiliated with them whatsoever, but I will tell you I have about a half dozen of these batteries. This one is the oldest and I've had this one for at least two years now. And uh, one other thing to keep in mind is that since I'm traditionally a portable operator, I actually have never owned a power supply. This is large enough that it will run all of my radios and all I do is top this 12 amp hour battery with the AC to DC uh, wall wart whenever it gets low. So I use these batteries a lot. And um, yeah, it works. If you guys actually, this is sort of a side tangent. If you think you need a, um, uh, well, I'm at a loss for words again. Yeah, so if you think you need a uh, power supply, I will tell you personally, I have never found a need for it, but also I don't operate in the shack very often. So we're gonna be looking mostly at uh, a couple of man packs, a couple of different sized batteries. So let's get into uh, sizing. So unlike most traditional electronics, uh, amateur radio typically deals with current instead of watts, uh, which makes things really nice because current, in this case amps, uh, is typically what you'll see advertised on these batteries. So this is a 12 amp hour battery which means I can draw 12 amps over some period of time. Okay, so let's start with the, the easy parts first. So this is my Yesu FTM 6000 man pack. There is a battery inside. It's a little bit smaller. It's actually a six amp hour battery. And the first thing you wanna do is figure out, based on your radio, uh, go ahead and download the manual, go to the specifications, and take a look at the uh, current consumption, and there'll be two values. There's one for receive and another one for transmit. So on receive, at least according to the specifications by Yesu, the FTM 6000 will draw 500 milliamps, or half an amp. All that means is, with this six amp hour battery, I can run on receive only at 500 milliamps, this battery for 12 hours until it's fully dead. So very simple math. And that really doesn't reflect reality. There's also the transmit side. So this radio actually has 
three different RF uh, power settings. It has five watts, 25 watts, and 50 watts. Now on their spec sheet, they only publish the numbers for 50 watts, which is 10 amps. And that actually, no, that number is very conservative. I've never seen it draw 10 amps. Actually, it's more like eight amps is what I've seen uh, based on my meter. And we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, those numbers are important. Uh, you wanna make sure too that your battery is also rated to draw that current. And the different size batteries will have different max uh, amp uh, operating uh, capabilities. So the first thing I wanna do, let's, so before we do that, uh, so we know that on the top in here at 50 watts, this will draw 10 amps, and then I'll receive, we're getting about 500 milliamps out. Now the question is, can I drive this radio at 50 watts with this battery, the six amp hour battery? Well, to do that, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the uh, spec sheet of the battery itself. So let's record the screen. All right, so I'm on the BioWino website now. I've got the 12 volt, six amp hour battery. And what we wanna do is scroll down to where it has the, the max discharge current. So we can see here that the maximum discharge current is 12 amps, which is good. So it means we can quite literally run at a full 50 watts because it draws 10 amps of 50 watts off this battery. So continuous discharge is under the manufacturer um, suggested uh, uh, suggestion. Uh, let's see here. And then it has a maximum peak uh, current of 24 amps. So it'll handle some spikes for about two seconds. So for us, it's not really um, that big of a deal. The other cool metric to look at here is the, if I can find it, if we take a look at the uh, AC to DC charger uh, that I use to charge these batteries, I also use solar, but we can see here that the current is two amps. So all that means is this is a six amp hour battery. If I completely have this thing discharged, then plug it into the wall to recharge it. It's very simple math. This is a six amp hour battery. We're going to charge at two amps. So it's gonna take three hours to charge this battery uh, using at least the AC wall wart. Um, you can do similar calculations with um, your solar panels, for example. So really cool stuff that we're able to do that. Uh, now, if I want to extend the runtime, right? I said that uh, this will draw 10 amps at 50 watts. The best thing to do is to back down your power. So at 25 watts, we actually get a reduced current consumption. Uh, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I recall that at 25 watts, this will use about six amps of, of current. And then at five watts, I believe is at four amps. And the manufacturer doesn't include those numbers. So the other thing I like to have is a uh, power meter. And this is from PowerWorks. And if I connect the, let's see, make sure I have it the right way. So we've got the source is connected to the battery here. This will not come on screen. Uh, but the nice thing about this is it'll give you uh, the amount of watts you've used the number of amps we've used, the current, which is what we really want. And it'll also give you the active uh, watts, current, and other factors as you're using them. So if we connect this guy now to our radio, turn it on, we're now in receive. And if I look at my meter now, we're drawing 0.29 amps, so 300 milliamps. And um, that's actually quite a bit lower than what the manufacturer said. So it's good that Yesu has been very conservative. So Yesu said it's gonna be 500 milliamps or half an amp. And I'm seeing in reality about 300 milliamps, which is good. So that would be my recommendation is that you also, in addition to figuring out what your theoretical maximums are in terms of what your radio is gonna require, what your battery can actually handle is to also then over time, take a look at a, getting a watt meter or a power meter and uh, 
just measuring that stuff. So I did a net last weekend where I was net control and I unplugged uh, this unit, plugged it back in. And the nice thing is I'll get the full runtime. So I quite literally set this for the hour. So while I was running as net control, I was running uh, 50 watts on this rig. I was net control for a little over an hour. And I wanna guess that I was transmitting half the time. And then the other half the time I was on receive, listening to other traffic as part of like the discussions. And they used about 5.5 amp hours. So with this six amp hour battery, I was pretty much near done. So running a net, this battery lasted me about one hour. Not great, but you also have to remember when I operate in the field, I'm not talking at full power uh, like I was for the net. So everybody's needs are gonna be a little bit different. Uh, how long are you gonna talk? How long are you gonna receive? How much power do you need? And again, just dealing with amp hours is a very convenient mechanism to figure out uh, what your needs are. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? So the other thing to note too, not all um, radios are designed alike. This is pretty much a full power uh, mobile rig. When I do summits on the air and I have the advantage of height, I will bring a smaller QRP radio. And this is my Yaesu FT818ND. This is a six watt radio. And again, if I go to the manufacturer's website, I can go ahead and take a look at their ratings. And they say 450 milliamps on receive. I actually see uh, quite a bit less than that. And then on transmit, it's 2.4 amps. So I size my batteries down uh, when I work with this rig, mostly because I can also top them off with solar. And what I prefer for this rig here uh, are the smaller 4.5 amp hour batteries because the maximum current that this will draw is uh, well under the maximum discharge current of this particular battery. And I found that I like carrying two. And the reason why I like carrying two is that I have some redundancy if one battery fails. Um, so rather than carrying nine amp hours, carrying two 4.5 actually works better for me in the field from the uh, one is none, two is one philosophy. And it also gives me the ability to charge one battery separately uh, while the other battery is in use. And all I use for that is a lightweight set of uh, solar panels. This is from Powerfilm. These are 20 watt panels. In general, with the 20 watt panels, I get about a current of, of when I have full sun, which is actually pretty good. It's a current, one amp of current under full sun is what I get. So that means that if I have this solar panel connected to uh, this battery through the solar charge controller, that every hour that I have full sun, I'm putting back one amp back into the battery. So let's do simple math. This is a 4.5 amp hour battery. It, let's assume it's fully discharged. Next, we're gonna assume we have full sun and this is able to draw one amp of current. So it'll take 4.5 hours to fully charge this battery. This is a 12 amp hour battery. It will take 12 hours given that this will actually draw in full sun um, one amp uh, per hour. So really simple. Uh, the solar charge controller is uh, the Buddy Pole Power Mini 2. Uh, this is the second model I've had. I've got one in one of my packs. Actually, it's in the 818 pack right now. So some of the takeaways are pretty simple. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are more expensive than lead acid, but they have a ton of benefits. Lighter weight, they have a lot of protections built in, more charge cycles, longer life, and you can use, the for the most part, the entire advertised capacity. And then sizing your batteries is a very simple operation of taking a look at the manufacturer specifications of transmit at whatever output uh, power you want to run your radio at. And then making sure the battery has the continuous uh, discharge rate is uh, higher than the maximum of what this will draw in terms of current. And then the simple math is how long are you gonna transmit how long are you going to receive and then figure 
that out. And the, again, the math is just simple multiplication when dealing with uh, amp hours. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Uh, be strong, be safe, and be prepared.